I think I should probably say to start just to manage expectations that not all of my past interactions with film stars have been entirely um, <laughs> successful. Uh, we actually uh, met once before many years ago, and like all good fans, I like to keep mementos. So I think we've got, maybe you want to. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't meant for me, I can tell you that much. You mentioned politics, and of course all the president's men, you know, is near and dear to my heart. Uh, and in fact, I called Carl Bernstein today in anticipation of this interview. Um, I, I know Carl, so he'd take my call, otherwise I would have called Woodward, which would have been a more natural conversation. But he said, I said, so what can you tell me? about Robert Redford and, and uh, all the president's men. He said there was never a shooting script. He said Redford would call Woodward every day, and Dustin Hoffman would call me every day and say, well, so what would you say in the circumstance? <laughs> and so the whole thing was kind of improvisational, which is not something I would ever would have guessed watching all the president's men. I like improv. That's not entirely true. <laughs> uh, the. Um, I like improvisation a lot. I believe in it, always have believed in it. When I was an actor starting out, that was the one, of, one of the most exciting and enticing things to me. Uh, so I've always enjoyed it, but I, I've never, I don't like it in films where it stands out like a sore thumb, where you're suddenly stepping outside of the frame of the film and you're saying, look, look I'm being real all of a sudden. To me, improvisation has to be incorporated into the film so it's unnoticeable. It just feels alive and fresh. There was some improvisation, but there was certainly a script. And the script came because we had a hard time getting a script uh, in the very beginning. And uh, the Post was nervous, and the Post didn't trust that. The Post was torn. They, they were in, attracted to the idea of it because I think the issue of celebrity, but they were also frightened of it because of celebrity. So, so they were afraid it might turn into a Hollywood film. And there wasn't a whole lot I could do to assure them that that wouldn't happen, um, that I believed a lot in authenticity and, and to be accurate was a big thing for me. But they didn't know me, why should they believe that? So therefore, they were always hedging their bets. And so when it finally was clear that they were very anxious about the script, and somehow an earlier draft got passed around and they didn't like it, and uh, then they started to protect themselves. And so I, I saw the project being doomed at that time. So what I did was I went to Bob Woodward and I said, look, uh, could you help? And Carl Bernstein, who, who happens to be a very good writer, um, wanted to help. He wanted to write a script himself. And I said, no, no, no. <laughs> um, but, but what would really help is if you guys could give us your notes or anything you've got about how you did what you did. Because for me, the, the, the film was gonna be, it was gonna be about hard work. Um, if you wanna boil it down to, to some refined point, it was gonna be about just hard work. Because these guys just worked harder than anybody else. And that was something that attracted me, the, the issue or the attraction of hard work. Second thing was that they, they seemed like a very odd couple. And that was interesting to me, too. I thought that the uh, alchemy of that would be really interesting. But finally, it was the notes. And, and both Bob and Carl were very forthcoming. And they, they uh, let us have their notes from all the scenes. Like, for example, the bookkeeper scene in the film with Jane Alexander, when, they, when Carl Dustin goes to just, it's like pulling teeth with a bookkeeper because she didn't want to talk. That was strictly from Carl's notes. So we were able, the notes were so complete from both Bob and Carl that we were able to literally shape whole scenes from their notes. So that was a great advantage. In terms of how they talked and how they behaved, yeah, that's true. Uh, Dustin was after Carl. You didn't have to go too far with Carl because he was pretty demonstrative to begin with. You know, he's, what you saw pretty much was what you got. And with Bob, he was another matter all entirely because he was hiding a lot in those days and he would I say hey Bob you know 
sorry, but you're pretty dull. And he said, I know it, I know it. I, really <laughs> and I said, well, that might be good for your job, but not for mine, you know. And I, I, I said, isn't there something weird about you? Isn't there something strange? <clears throat> No, I'm really not very interesting. Carl's the interesting one, and so forth. It took me a, a while, and I just I, I struggled like mad to, to figure out what, what the hell am I gonna, how am I gonna get a grip on this character? And and then he said something very revealing. One one of his friends, I asked one of his friends, uh, I said, do you know anything about Bob that's different? He said, well, you know, he he's a pyromaniac. And I said, what? And he said, yeah. He said. He, he gets obsessed with building fires. And have you ever watched him build a fire in his fireplace? I said, no. And he said, watch him sometime. It's, his eyes glaze over. It's a, <laughs> so I did, and I watched him poke a fire while we were working, and pretty soon our, our conversation went out the window, and he was like obsessing with a fire. And I thought, wow. And then I realized, wait a minute. How, how am I going to make a film about a reporter who's a pyromaniac? <laughs> so, so finally I asked him, I said, what? Uh, can you tell me something about how you work? You're so dogged. I mean, you're relentless. And, and he said, well, I had a comprehensive test at Yale, two days. The first day uh, of the test, uh, I just completely blew it. He said, I, had, I didn't study. I dogged it. And, um, and I knew I blew it. I, I didn't know the answers. I was making stuff up. And that night, I went home, and I studied so hard for the next day because I, I knew I'd failed the first one, I had to succeed in the second one, so I, I worked all night and I, I knew it like the back of my hand. When did the test, when the, the results came back, I had succeeded the first day and failed the second. <laughs> so I went to the professor and told him, that he can't be right, he's wrong, and he showed me that in fact it was right, and I realized at that point that I didn't know what good work was. And that was my cue, that his obsession with constantly working and working and you know, overdoing things and, and being researching every detail was a clue to his character because he was relentless. Also, the fact that he wanted the people that they were interviewing to see him as kind of flat and not intrusive or aggressive and very polite and kind of genteel and, and let Carl play the more flamboyant character. But when it came right down to the final moment, Bob was the one that would go for the juggler and he would do it in a surprising way. And to me, that was the cue for the character as to how to play him. A pyromaniac in a newsroom could be a little dangerous.